uh, I want to uh, use this opportunity to really we have kids in this in this uh, in this service today but also we're going to get the adults to uh, participate in this okay how many of you know how to clap have you ever saw somebody that does not know how to clap it literally is it, it's a thing okay all right so kiddos adults you can participate in this there's they're all right here so Ms. lisa you got the kid row but um not, as long as it's not skid row right um all right kids you're gonna watch pastor adults if you want to help this this is a game right it's a game you've seen this before all right ready we're gonna clap you ready get your hands ready get your hands ready you gonna, don't hit your neighbor you ready get your hands ready and clap and ah <laughs> all y'all too. Ready? Here we go. Ready? You got to watch me because we're not going to clap unless we clap. Ready? And gotcha. And clap. All right. And clap. Ready? Ready? Let's try it one more time. Ready? Ah, gotcha. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Ready? Let's now this time for real. We're just going to clap or we're going to try to clap all together. All right. Clap all together. Now I'm inviting every if you if, if this hurts you um, I'm not trying to get you to, to hurt it. I mean, if it hurts to clap, I get it. But, but, but if you can, if you're able, would you clap with me? Here we go. Ready, everybody? All right, here we go. There we go. We're doing good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Good job. Good job. Now, as we, good job. Now, hey, didn't the didn't the decibel level kind of like raise a little bit? How, did you feel the energy? Okay, I don't mean to be weird about this, but did you feel the energy as you clap? Okay, there's a reason why you go to sporting events or different things like that, and, and they're, they're, they're rousing everybody, okay? Listen, if they can do that at a stupid sports game, that means absolutely nothing in light of eternity. Yeah, I said stupid. Okay, yeah. if that offends you, I'm sorry. I really don't. But honestly, that's my opinion. So, <laughs> yeah. but, but if they can do that at a sports game or some kind of a stupid concert or some kind of a stupid event. Are we supposed to say stupid in church? <laughs> we can do that for God. Amen. We can get riled up for the Lord, okay? And, 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 and my, my admonishment to all of us today is utilize this. The psalm is telling us in Psalm 47, he starts off with, Oh, clap your hands. And look at what he says. All ye people, <laughs> all ye people. And he says, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Now, last week in Psalm 46, if you remember, we almost ended with be still. Because yeah. there is a time for us to calm down. There is a time for us to. And as we pointed out, that word be still actually means to let your hands off the will. Let God or, or, or the, 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 the catchy phrase. Let go and let God, right? Uh, take your hands off the wheel. Uh, relax. Uh, be still. There's something about... Listen, most of us in here would have a problem with this anyways. If I told you to sit here for 60 seconds and be quiet, there's about 95% of us in here couldn't do it. You know, we got the we got problems and we got we got a jitter here. We got to check our Facebook feed. We got to look our make sure that right. Like that's just how we operate. So be still. There's there is a valid principle and just be still. Let go. Relax. Trust God. Right. And 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 and, and the beauty in this is uh, he says, I will be exalted among the evil. So we pointed that out last week. We spent some time trying to develop that. I will be exalted, he says. But we're going to sort of visit that. And a lot of the commentators believe that this psalm was also written by Hezekiah. Remember last week we pointed out <clears throat> excuse me, that, that Hezekiah probably wrote Psalm 46 around the time the Assyrians were surrounding the city of Jerusalem, ready to attack. They'd already uh, uh, attacked one of the cities in Samaria and, and done some damage there. They, they, they made some agreements. That, then they reneged on those agreements. 
And now they're surrounding the city of Jerusalem and they're nervous, they're scared, they're afraid, they're, what do we do? But they did the right thing by going to uh, God, and at the time, it was the way to do it was go to the prophet. Isaiah was the prophet at the time. And they go to Isaiah the prophet, and they, they beg God. They, they pour out to God, which is what we should do. When we face a hard time, something we don't know what to do, something just so hot and heavy, uh, there's a good, good biblical principle here for us to just go to God. Now, does that mean that we don't do anything? No, that does not necessarily mean that. God may lead you to do, not do anything and just trust Him in that. But make sure, make sure you're trusting Him in it. But the reality of it is, they went to God. They, had, they couldn't do nothing. And they woke up and the next morning, there's 185,000 people laying dead, right? So, as we read this particular psalm, we can understand why they would say that this was in response to what God did. Remember, they woke up in the morning and they looked up across the fields and they saw that He broke the spear he broke the chariot he broke the sword like there wasn't even a sword lifted there wasn't a spear thrown there was not one and 185,000 people laying dead God brought a victory so today the call to praise because of and I'm going to point out three areas we're going to go through Psalm 47 and 48 and I believe we can break it down in three ways one for what he is and what he does a call to praise God for what He is and what He does. Two, for what He is doing. Or, or I'm sorry, for what He has done. Okay? And then three, what He will do. The beauty of that is, no matter what the context, we can praise God. You can either praise God for what He is and what He's doing, which is always going to be good, and, or what He has done, which is always been good and what he's going to do which is always going to be good and powerful and mighty and great so let's look at it as it breaks down this morning i'm going to pause for prayer because i need his help we all need his help i know we're a little bit uh, behind the time as far as where we're normally at normally we're about 11 10, 5 11 10 11 15 i'm getting up here it's 11 23 so we've taken a little bit of time this morning but i trust that you came prepared to hear from god that's what I'm here for. And I hope that's what you're here for. Let's pray this morning. Father, will you help us? We've taken some time to address a few things in the announcements, listening to uh, an update from our missionaries, uh, introducing some things that our church, we believe, will help us just kind of take that next step of being connected as a church. But Lord, it's all in vain. All of that's in vain if we don't have you in the service this morning. We need you this morning, Lord. Please help us. Uh, help us as we navigate these two psalms that we would uh, shed the right light and see it in the proper way as we take these, uh, these two psalms and see what you have verse by verse. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we read this psalm, verse 1 says, Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God uh, with the voice of triumph. Verse 2, For the Lord Most High, and here's, here's a few verses I want to point out. The Lord Most High is terrible. Uh, he is a great king over all the earth. It's a, man, we use that word terrible uh, in, a, in, a, in a negative way. Uh, in the old King's English, if you want to refer to it in that way, uh, it literally meant great. It literally meant mighty and powerful, uh, just large, if you would. God is great. He is large. And as the, as the king Hezekiah and the people were looking back on this great victory for what God has done, they were able to stand up, clap their hands, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Why? Because it was Him that brought the victory. Can, can I help you with something? Yeah, you might have some, some great ability to think things through and you might have great wisdom in your life. But let me just tell you for one minute that you need to recognize that came from God. That's a good place for all of us to land. You know, we might think, well, I thought of this all on my own. Yeah, but who gave you the ability to think in the first place? And we, that's where we get tripped up. And we, it comes all about us. And we want to put the focus on a man and, and us and self. And, and, and then when things go bad, we blame God. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not how this works. 
This works. We, we should have our, our posture towards God at all times. He is great. Uh, he is high. He is sitting on the throne. Are you following with me? Verse number, verse number uh, uh, three. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob whom he loved. God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the shout, sound of a trumpet. Uh, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of His holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together. Even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. So as far as what He is and what He does, we're going to look at verse 2, verse 5, verses 7 through 9. And in Psalm 48, we're going to look at verse 1, verse 3, verse 10, and verse 14. So, for what He is and what He does, first of all, in verse number 2, we see that He is terrible. That's that reverential fear. That's that great God. He is a great King over how many? All. Oh, let's... That didn't sound very convincing to me. Uh, the, he is a great king over all. all. Now, remember the, the, the profound statement. All means all, and that's all, all means. Was that, was that pretty profound? All means all, and that's all, all means. So, he is king over all. He is king over, does that mean he's king over you? Uh, does that mean he's king over Joe Biden? Does that mean he's king over Vladimir Putin? Does that mean he's king over uh, Governor Kelly? Does that mean he's king over your situation that you happen to be facing right now that just seems so uh, impossible? He is. Ha. He is. So, he is. Uh, hey, we can praise God because he is king. He is terrible the, in the old king's English. Then look what he says in verse number 5. God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with a sound of a trumpet. I love this. I'm going to try to use some scripture to help us out this morning. But uh, you can, if you would, you could take some time because I think maybe this was written about like what he had done and the fact that uh, when David brought the, the Ark of the Covenant back into Jerusalem, you can read about this in 1 Samuel, I believe, 2 Samuel, I'm sorry, chapter 6. Uh, you could read about how the, 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 Ark of the God, Ark of God comes back into Jerusalem. And when it came back, boy, they were just shouting. They were praising God. They were singing and dancing. And, and if you remember, this is the story where Michael, David's wife, got jealous because he was down there and he was rejoicing. And never mind the fact that she should have been down there rejoicing with him, but she was up there jealous and, and just, oh, look at you, just rejoicing. Okay, there was shouting because... The ark of God represents the presence of God that was making it back to its rightful place. And did you know that when God reaches the rightful place and you're in my life, there's going to be rejoicing? You can't help but shout and praise God and clap your hands and just sing to God. Why? Because He is in His rightful place. You know, <laughs> it's... It sounds very simple, but the reason why we have a lot of uh, struggles and trials in our life is because we just kind of forget about that. We do. We, we, we forget. Just because, uh, just because the, 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 the stock market took a plunge and now your 401k doesn't show the right numbers anymore, you know God's still on the throne? You know He's taking care of you even when the stock market was good and... It's going to take care of you when the stock market is bad. Uh, why? Because you trust Him. Uh, he's going to take care of it. Well, you have a, 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 a seemingly insurmountable problem that's facing you right now. And, and yeah, how's God going to do it? I don't know. But can you trust Him in it? God is King. He is terrible. Uh, he is gone up with a shout. Listen, have you allowed Him to have that place in your life? Because that's what it's just going to take. The, the children of Israel could have just left the ark there. Uh, they could have just uh, let it be. But I want, to th I want you to think about this other time that Jesus ascended. And here's the verses, if you, if you will, in Acts chapter 1. When he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. A cloud received him out of their sight. 
And while they looked be, uh, steadfastly toward heaven, and as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Here's the thing. Just as he ascends, he will descend. Not only has he ascended with a shout, but he is going to descend with a shout. And we see that, that uh, uh, promised us in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Okay, He is going to come back down for you and for me and receive us back. Into, into heaven. Most people call it the rapture, the, 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 the second coming, whatever you want to call it. We have the promise Jesus is coming back. Amen. And he's going to, when he does so, he will come with a shout and with a trumpet. Why? Because he's king. The, those people knew in those days that the, the king did not necessarily uh, sit on his throne without some sort of a pomp. Some sort of, you know, uh, 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 trumpet that being sounded for people to recognize this is the king. Everybody recognize this is the king. Is God sitting king in your life? Because if he is, we have reason to shout. Amen. We have reason to call to, uh, for the call to praise because he is worthy. Uh, we have reason to, to lift up our voices and, and praise him as we do. <laughs> so not only is he... Uh, great and terrible. Not only is he ascended, but, but look at verse 7 through 9 in, in your psalm. Uh, For God is king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigneth over the what? The heathen. So, listen. Y'all y'all all heathen. That, that's, that's proper English, by the way. Y'all all heathen. Okay, we're all heathen. Okay, God reigns over you and me. Now, th the reality of it is that as that breaks down in true scriptural context, he was referring to the Gentile nations. They were looking out as Jewish people thinking God's our king. Yeah, God's our king. But God actually reigns over everybody. You know, those people that aren't sitting in church today and God's the last thing on their mind right now, God still reigns over them. Oh, yeah, they may not be submitting to him, but he still reigns. God's still in control. And, and try to keep that in focus as we think about what's going on around us. And, and this world just seems like it's just going to hell in a handbasket. I don't even know where that phrase came from, but, but it sounds like the, the world's just going to hell in a handbasket. Why? Oh, things are just out of control, and, and they're making this choice and that choice, and they're doing this and they're doing that. Hey, guess what? God is sitting in charge. He still reigns. And I love what, what old S.M. Uh, S. Lockridge said, the old black preacher. Listen, he's my king, and you can't impeach him, and he's not going to resign. He's my king. That's God. Uh, he always sits as over all the earth. He is uh, over all the heathen, and he sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. I want to point you to this. This, this gives us reason to rejoice. In Revelation chapter 4, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, uh, which was, and is, and is to come. By the way, they're praising him for, for what he is, uh, for what he was, and for what he is, what is to come. Are you with me? This is a reason to praise God. This is a reason to praise God. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat where? On the throne. We see this already in verse number, uh, verse number uh, uh, 8 of our text. Uh, sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. And when those beasts give glory and honor. Verse 9. And, and, and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. Watch this. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him and that liveth forever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou wast created all, th all things. Th sorry, thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Do you know the cor correct and proper posture of an individual coming into the presence of Almighty God and recognizing that he is absolutely sitting on a throne is to just fall down and worship before him because he is worthy for what he is 
uh, for what He was and for what He will do. Are you with me? We should not have any reason to despair. Oh yes, we will. We will despair. Our flesh will step up and take the throne and, and we will all of a sudden be in despair because things are just falling apart in my life. Uh, but guess who's sitting on the throne? God help us to make sure He is sitting on the throne. Now no, we can't dethrone Him, but in our lives and in our daily context and things that we uh, are in control of every day, God has given us that gift of choice. We let Him go. We pull Him off the throne and we put our, our wants and our wishes and our desires and our relationships and our health and our money and our... We put all that on the, on the throne and then things go south. Are you with me? I'm sorry for the negative connotation of the South, but uh, things go South. Okay, like, why does the South have to be negative? But uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm just saying that for those of you who are rebels. And, uh, you know, but anyways, the reality of it is who do we have on the throne? Uh, who do we have on the throne? And I want to draw your attention now back to the text in Psalm 47, verse number 9. Because, because, this is great. I love this. The princes of the people are gathered together even the people of the, of the God of Abraham. So there's the two, two different people. Uh, the princes of the people, that's the, those people. You know, the other people over there, right? If you happen to make those distinctions in your life, and you, and you see two different people, the saved and unsaved, you know, God still sits as king over them. And if you consider yourself the people of God, the Abraham, the God of Abraham is my God. Okay, well, guess what? God is still in charge. Love this. Even the people of God, for the shields of the earth belong unto God. That is those who, who make the major decisions. The, the, the people who can call to battle. Uh, the ones who make the decisions to, to, to call people to war. Even God has control over them. That doesn't mean He's controlling their decisions, but He has control over them. Okay? Now, it is hard for us to reckon sometimes because we're like, why in the world are we in this pointless war uh, over X? And we can look down through the pages of history and think, what a pointless battle that was. Well, that's just because mankind is flawed and, and we just lean on our own understanding and we go into things that, that really are hurtful and, and harmful. And, and, and that happens when we take the, the control. Okay? But when people truly pursue God and perceive Him for King... Okay, I promise you, the right decisions will be made. We will defend accordingly. God didn't let them raise a sword. He didn't let them shoot one arrow. He didn't let them fling one spear or get one chariot yoked up. He just flattened the whole entire army. And God can do that in your and my life. Amen. You just have to trust Him. And here's, what has, here's what's going to happen. Here's the result. I love this. He is greatly exalted. Now, if you, if you mark in your Bible, some people don't like to do this, that's okay. I took a little arrow and I drew it all the way back to Psalm 46, verse 10. Because they said, be still and know. Now, by the way, did you notice in that Psalm, I want to point this out real quick. Did you notice in Psalm 46 that that was the one time God was speaking to them? All the other times they were saying, God, uh, He did this. Come see all that. There's it. And then uh, in that verse, in verse number 10, God is speaking to them saying, Be still. Let go. Let me have this. You let me control this. <laughs> Shabbat, which is where we get our word Sabbath. Uh, relax. Repose. Desist from exertion. Hey, take the opportunity to let God have this. Okay? You know why he's not exalted in your and my life? Because we're controlling it. And guess who gets the honor in that? Andrew does. Oh, you did such a great job, Andrew. No, 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 no. He should be exalted in it. And that doesn't mean we can't give people honor and praise and, 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 and thank them for things that they've done. But ultimately, guess who gets the honor in this? Jesus does. Because you truly let Him have it. If there's even a fingerprint on this that's, that's made by you, then, then there is going to be one little sniffle of glory that you can receive in that. And that's not how God operates. 
Well, he's selfish in that. No, he, 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 he deserves it. He's worthy of it. And so he is greatly exalted. And so I want to point you to some, some verses here. John 3, 14. Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Also in verse number, in, in chapter 12, he said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Do you know what happens when we allow God to truly have His way in our hearts and our lives? And we just let go? Listen, when He steps in and He takes over and He wrecks the, the problem, the potential problem that we're facing, the 185,000 quote-unquote that are in our lives, y'all got them. <laughs> y'all facing them down right now. There's 185,000 Assyrians staring you down right now wanting to, to, to wreck your world. Okay? You got them, I got them. They're just staring us down right now, wanting to, to flatten us. And we think, oh, I'll tell you how I do this. Oh, I'd go there. I'm going to tell them about themselves. Man, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to give it to them. Okay? And you can. You, you might have all the right words to say. You might have all the right actions. You might have all the right uh, uh, efforts to pour into that. But you're going to miss out on seeing him. I lift it up. Do you know what Jesus was referring to right here? Him being lifted up on the cross. Do you know that ultimately is what we're here for? We are gathered today because Jesus rose, lifted himself up on the cross. He was elevated above mankind on the cross for, for the sins of you and I. The, the, the sins of the Joe Bidens and the Vladimir Putins and, the, and the, whoever else is you want to throw out there right now. The sins of the Larry McCarters. The sins of the, of, of, of the, the Gene Riggs and the Alan Hawkins. Uh, the sins of, of, of Andrew Kennard. And God knows that was a lot of sin. And, and he was lifted up. Why? So that all men can be drawn to him. Listen, if he's not exalted in our lives then all men will be drawn to me. And you know what? You and I will fail. And then there will be uh, more hurt people laying along the sides of the spiritual highway. Huh? How many of you have been hurt? Well, don't raise your hand. Uh, many of you have been hurt by church people or a church or some type of a church context. You've been hurt uh, because somebody decided that they were going to put themselves on the platform uh, excuse me. Uh, no, the platform. Yeah, somebody was decided they were going to put themselves on the throne, and, and, and subsequently we were hurt. Right? Now, kudos to all of us in here that are hurt like that because you're still here. You say, I mean, you know what, God, I'm not going to let that. I'm not going to let that situation control me. No, God, you're bigger than that. And guess who's getting the honor in that? God is. Not, not, not you, not your situation, not your context, not, the, not Cottonwood Baptist Church. Listen, Cottonwood Baptist Church deserves no credit in any of that. Uh, Pastor Andrew Kenner deserves no credit in any of this. We all should be lifting him up because we're putting him on the throne of, hey, I'm, I'm facing some pretty hard situations right now. But God, you are. You are lifted up. I want to make sure you are uh, presently lifted up and ex exalted in my life. Also, verse number 1 of Psalm 48. I'm trying to make sure that we make it through this. He says in verse number 1, Great is the Lord. I love this. And greatly to be praised in the city of our God. The mountain of His holiness. Now, positionally, they had to go, excuse me, they had to go up to the temple. And, 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 and usually at certain times of the year, like for us, it's our Sunday. Sunday's the day that we worship God. We've set it aside because Jesus rose again from the grave on Sunday. Now, he came up out of the grave on that first and appointed. A, listen, it was the time for us. This is the time for us to make sure that we are bringing our worship to the house of the Lord on a Sunday so we can worship him for that and praise him for that. And that the people in these days, they, there were certain times set aside that they would bring their worship to the temple. And so when they're saying that great is the Lord and greatly to praise in the city of our God and the mountain of His holiness, the, the, the temple was sitting up on a mountain. And they would bring that worship up there. And do you know what? When, when you see that word praised, 
I love it. One of the words that, that, that defines that, that praise is raving or celebrating. Oh, man. Listen, who is becoming a Christian or who is going to become a Christian because of how you rant and rave about Jesus? Not because you're crazy and beaten up, up over the head with, because they're saying the wrong things and they're being rotten and they're saying dirty jokes or whatever and they're talking filthy. Not because we're beating them up over that, but because you just absolutely rant and rave about Jesus. And the, and, 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 and the people in the, in the city would see the children of Israel going to the mountain raving about Jesus. Raving about how great God is. He is great. Who's the last person you told that? Outside of Cottonwood Baptist Church. This is the last people you've shared. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I just want to rave about how good He's been in my life. May I submit to you that probably you haven't been able to because you have had yourself on the throne. You've had your uh, problem on the throne. And I say that because we all do it. We all do it. I'm not up here because I'm perfect at it. I promise you that. I'm not up here because I, I nail this every time. I think God uses flawed people to do this just to show all of us, hey, we're all in this together. We struggle together. Let's help each other in this. But let's ultimately land that God needs to be on the throne and we want to just rant and rave about how good He is. Man, isn't that good? Great is the Lord. And He says, uh, He is, verse number three, He is known in her palaces for a refuge. Do you, who knows, who knows outside of this church, maybe in your friend circle, who knows that God is a refuge for you? Boy, I know, I know, I know, I know that they're going to run to God when they have a problem. They're not going to run to the bank account. They're not going to run down to this. Oh, that doesn't mean we don't have to, okay? That doesn't mean we don't have to go to the bank and try to get a, uh, something that we need or, 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 or tap our resources. That doesn't mean that. That just means they know. It doesn't matter what it is, they're going to trust God in this. And God is a refuge. You see what they're saying there? God is known. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. Everybody knows that Andrew's going to run to God. Everybody knows that Gabe is going to make a, a quick beeline to God when he has trouble. And he's going to take refuge in that. Yes, he's going to uh, seek wisdom and he's going to have to make the choice. Ultimately, we're going to have to make the decision. And it's going to land in your lap and you're going to have to make that choice. Yes. But who are you taking refuge in? That's what's... And, and, and who knows that? See, when it's so uh, just, just evident in our life that other people know... God is known as a refuge. Uh, God knows. Listen, uh, I tell you what, there's something about that. When you can look at someone else and you know they're walking through something heavy and you know, you know, you know, you know. Listen, they're going to come out of this pretty good. Not, not, not that they won't be burnt, beat up and burnt and, and, and bruised and battered by it, but they're just going to come out pretty good because they're trusting God in this. I wish I could tell you that you won't get bruised and battered by this trial that you're facing I wish I could tell you that but the reality of it is God's going to protect you in it He's going to walk with you in it but you got to trust Him for it you got to trust Him for it yeah it sounds simple but it is just trust Him let go so you can see how well He handles this and verse number 10 we're trying to finish up uh, God is okay what He is what He does verse number 10 According to thy name, O God, so is the praise. Uh, unto the ends of the earth, thy right hand is full of righteousness. I think I have time to share these verses with you, but also uh, I hope you can read this in Philippians chapter 2. He says, according to thy name, O God, so is thy praise. And in Philippians chapter 2, he says, uh, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So we're talking about Christ Jesus, who... The Bible says, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, 
He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, so because he humbled himself, because he took upon him the form of a servant, because he was willing to become obedient unto death, God hath highly, what's there's that word again, exalted him. So what, what are we reading here? What we're reading is, 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 is when we uh, yield ourselves to God and we allow Him to have control and we let Him, we, we humble ourselves and we allow that mindset to be in us. The, the mindset that Jesus Christ humbled Himself, I humble myself. The mindset that Jesus gave Himself as a, as a sacrifice, I can give myself as a sacrifice. The mindset that Jesus was willingly uh, able to be a servant. That mindset, hey, God highly exalts Him. Uh huh. Look at it. And, and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Not, 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 not one still standing. Not one still bent. Not, no, every knee will bow. Your knee's going to bow, sir. Ma'am, your knee is going to bow. We are going to profess that the name of Jesus and every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Not the glory of Cottonwood Baptist Church. Not the glory of Andrew Kenner. Listen, the glory of God. The name, hey, His name is exalted. Are you following me? We should praise Him for these things. Because of who He is. What He is doing. He is worthy. He is great. He is exalted. We should be praising Him for that. And also, I love this, love this. He says, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. And that reminds me of Acts 1.8, where Jesus said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Hey, how, what is praise? Praise is witness. Praise is, is sharing. Praise is celebrating. Uh, listen, he said, ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and in the othermost parts of the earth. When he says the ends of the earth, hey, he's talking about share it with everybody. You know why we have a vision for missions at Cottonwood Baptist Church? Because there are people that have dedicated themselves to just giving their lives to make sure the gospel reaches the other most parts of the earth. You and I should be involved, actively involved in the, in the presentation of that. Uh, you, you, at Cottonwood, we, we have a missions uh, part, that, that budget that we make sure that's dedicated to giving and paying, paying for these missionaries' uh, needs every month. Now, we're not meeting all of them. We're just a part of it. But you know what they're doing? They're making sure the gospel is getting out in Brazil, as we heard this morning. In Boulder, Colorado. Uh, in, in down in the Navajo Reservation. Uh, the, 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 the Marks family raising support currently so they can go uh, to, to uh, uh, Portugal. There you go. Sorry, I almost said Peru. Portugal. Uh, and, and, and then, listen, there's going to be more that keep coming. And, and we get an opportunity to, to share that in, with them. Listen, but what are you doing right now to share that? Making sure that His name is exalted to the ends of the earth. What are we doing right now? Uh, because that's what Jesus promised us. That His name would be exalted, highly lifted up, even to the ends of the earth. Aren't you excited about that? Listen, it made it to you, so who are we sharing it with now? And then the final thing in what He is, verse number 14 of 48, He says, For this God is our God and forever and ever, and He will be our guide even unto death. God is our God, and He is our guide. God is our God, and He is our guide. He made that promise. Oh, and by the way, by the way, uh, we don't have the time to go there, but in John, you'll see several I am statements. You know, when, Jesus, or when God showed up to Moses on the mountain, He said, just tell him, I am sent you. I am sent you. And the Pharisees and the scribes and all those people are so clinging to that. Oh, this is Moses, the God of Moses, the God of Moses. And then Jesus shows up and he says, I am the bread of life. <laughs> he says, I am the water. Yeah, he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Hey, you know what? He can be that for you right now. Amen. Now, if you haven't trusted him for your, for your salvation, then I tell you right now, get to him right now. Because he can be the door for your salvation. 
But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, He can also be the door, the way, the truth, the life. In whatever situation and circumstance you're facing right now, I am. <laughs> I am. Hey, you know what? He is. There's a present uh, nest to God. He is. He is. And, and we should praise Him for that. We should uh, be willing to call to praise and rave about that. We should celebrate that. And I love this, this statement. We're going to move on to the next two. But it says, worship is always, 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 and I say that in all caps, always. Worship is always the proper human response to His divine mercies and goodness towards us. Always. Worship isn't jumping around on a platform and, and, and music and stuff like that. You can do worship in that way. You can do worship by singing and as we have a pray, uh, Jesus will outshine them all. Uh, we, can, we can worship Him by singing to Him, but we can also wor we worship Him by giving in the offering plate. And, and, and obe obeying Him in our tithes and our offerings. We worship Him in that way because we realize just how good He's been and how wonderful He's been and merciful to us to make sure we have uh, uh, the ability to work. And, right? And we also worship Him by giving to others and, and, and sharing the gospel. It's always the right, proper human response. Worship. So, uh, that gets pretty good of what He is. But listen, look at what He's done. If you're honest with yourself and with others, He's done quite a bit for you. If He stopped right now, He's been pretty good. Actually, He's been more than good. Actually, He's been beyond good. If He stopped right now, God is good. He is, he is and He has been. What, these are the things that He has done. As they looked back in, in Psalm 48, as they looked back, they noticed in verse number 4, I said, Lo, the kings were assembled, by, they, they passed by together. Uh, they saw it, so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there as pain as a, a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. You know what they were doing? They were looking back on all the different things. The, 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 the time they were talking about with the, the ships of Tarshish. Uh, you could read about that in, in 1 Kings chapter 28. And Jehoshaphat decided to kind of cozy up with some of the, the, the guys who were sending ships down. And God just came up with an east wind and broke. Literally broke their ships. It's a good way for him to prove that he was in charge. Imagine a ship. A ship. You know, we shoot like these missile things at them through the water and, and some of them you know, they don't sink. I mean, God broke it with the wind. See, they're looking back. They're looking back at this and they're saying, God, this is you. Man. God, look what you've done. Not only that, but they look back at what he did, the, the 185,000 people laying dead. See, they're looking back. You and I, if we would just stop in our context right now, you might not be able to think, well, he's on the throne, he's on the... You may not be able to think that, but you sure can stop and look back at what he has done and thank him for that. <laughs> you can do that. Listen, the fact that you just breathed another breath of his air is pretty good. The fact that you have a eternal home in heaven that you don't deserve, that's pretty good. Listen, we are blessed. He has done so much good things for you and for me. And we can praise Him for that. This is why I love the fact that praise is not about what's, what He's doing right now because we may feel like things just aren't working out the way we want it. Listen, we can always look back and see, this is good. Not only that, we can look ahead and see that He's coming back someday. He will reign. He will step on this, on this earth and conquer, conquer the earth. He will wrap Satan up in chains and cast him into the lake of fire forever and forever. He will do that. And you and I should be able to stand in worship, if at least for what He's done. But I'm telling you, He has done so much good things for us. Again, verse number, uh, this is for what he's done. Verse number 12 and 13, he says in Psalm 48, Walk about Zion. I go round about her. 
Tell the towers thereof, mark ye well her bulwarks, consider her palaces, that ye may tell it to the generation following. Listen, who are you going to tell? What they were doing is they, they were kind of in a, in a, physically, let's walk around the city. Let me just show you. Let me just show you what God's done. Who's the last person you grabbed by the hand, proverbially speaking, and said, let me just show you what God's done. You pointed, that for me, I could point to that beautiful wife right there and just say, look what God has done for me. I look at these two beautiful children that God has blessed me with. Listen, just the fact that I'm standing here proclaiming the word of God to God's people, we're all just a bunch of broken people in the fact that I have the opportunity to stand up and proclaim the word of God. Hey, God has been pretty good to me. Listen, we can all rejoice in that. I am telling you, just like the psalmist says in verse number one, clap your hands, rejoice, shout unto God. You have a lot to be thankful for. Even if he stopped right now. And if he just, if he never whispered one more word to you, you can still be rejoicing in him till the day you die because he has been that good to us. Woo! <laughs> But look what they did. They marked the boards. They, they, they took inventory. Now there's a, ver there's a song out there. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Count your blessings. Huh? Listen. That's what they were doing. They're walking around. The, the, they're taking inventory. And you know what? Just like John did, I believe. At the end of the day, not even the world could contain the scrolls of just the works that Jesus did in his three and a half years of ministry. And you and I have got, I've got 40. We're going to ask some of you how many years of goodness God's been to you. But listen, even if we just took my 40 years, all of y'all could be rejoicing. We could all be rejoicing because God has been so good to us. But let me ask you this. You can take inventory. But who are you going to tell? Who are you going to tell? See, tell it to the generation following. Listen, your kids, some of you have kids that are grown. And, and as you look back, you probably have a lot of regrets and how that you raised them. And you feel like, man, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. No, speak that into them. Just tell them how good God's been to you. Don't, don't listen. You, you can beat yourself up all day long about the regrets that you have. That's where Satan wants you to be. No, share the goodness of God with your people, with your children. Listen, tell somebody. You may not have children. Tell someone else's child. Listen, child, God's been good to me. I know that feels pretty good saying it that way. You tell someone how good God's been. There is a generation behind us that needs to know God's been good. They don't need to know how bad Joe Biden is. They don't need to know. We know how bad that is. They don't need to know how rotten Trump is and how rotten all the Democrats and Republicans are. Listen, they need to know how good God's been to you and me. Amen. God needs to... Listen, tell it to the generations. Tell it to the generations following. Is, listen, are you saved? Do you have Jesus Christ living inside of you? Are you thinking about this for a minute? The fact that He came down to this earth, God Himself humbled Himself, became obedient unto death, and He's living inside of you. The God who created the universe is living inside of you, and He cares enough about you to save your rotten soul. My, my rotten soul. We can rejoice in that. And if that's all we got, we can share that with someone else. Man, I'm telling you what, you and I can rejoice in that. We can praise Him for that. <laughs> and I love this. i, I got to share this. I'm trying to t finish this up in about 10 minutes, y'all. But listen, Acts 4, 18. That's a powerful prayer. Because do you remember who, who, do you remember who denied Jesus as, as, as crucifixion? Say it with me. Peter. Peter. Oh, yeah. Oh, Peter. The loud mouth. The guy that just said it all. He spoke his mind. Here he is standing before the council. And the Bible says in verse number 18 of Acts chapter 4. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Look, y'all just like me, you're scared of the, the law. If they came in right now and told you to shut up and stop speaking, you probably would. Maybe. I hope not. I mean, right now I'm pretty confident that I wouldn't. 
But, verse number 19, Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God judge ye. They say, okay, you might think that it's right for me to listen to you because you, you kind of have some kind of status of leadership. You're the police. You're the judge. Whatever. <laughs> I love this. Verse 20. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. <laughs> so... When they had further threatened them, this is so funny to me, this story is just hilarious to me. They let him go, finding nothing how they might punish them, because the people, for all men glorified God for that which was done. <laughs> for the man was about 40 years old on whom this miracle of the healing was shown. If you read that story, they basically say, hey, don't say it anymore. They slapped him on the hand, told him to go, and said, stop talking about Jesus. And you know what? You know what all it takes for some of us? If someone just stands up and says, Paul, that religion stuff. And we're like, oh, I better not talk to them. I don't want to offend them. That's how easy it is for us. I'm I've been there. Listen, when you stop and you realize just how much Jesus gave to you, these guys, they watched Jesus be ripped away from them and brutally murdered and crucified unfairly. And they literally were running for their lives every time they preached about Jesus. We don't have that. We have the freedom to share openly uh, uh, every day that we live the gospel. And you say, well, they won't let me do that. I get that part. I get that part. But you still can share it with somebody. There still are people out there that want to hear the truth. So do it. I'm not telling you to be foolish about it and, and lose your job or whatever, but I am telling you, just tell someone how good God's been to you. If this is all you got, and y'all you, know you got more than that. You know you got more than what Jesus did for you on the cross. The fact that you just breathed another breath, the fact that you uh, woke up uh, this morning and were able to plant your feet firmly on the ground. Listen, God has been good to us. I love this. The story, I, I encourage you to go and read it. Read how John and Peter are like, whatever you say. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell Jesus. I'm going to tell others about Jesus no matter what. Because here's the, here's the reality of this. When you've experienced Him so much, it's going to come out. When y'all excited about what God's done for you, it's going to come out. You're going to have to share it with somebody. But just recognize it. Just recognize how good he's been. And then finally, I know y'all been waiting for that. What he will do. What he will do. Look, go back to verse 3 of Psalm 47. He shall subdue the people under us, the nations under our feet. In other words, he is going to render submissive. He is going to conquer by force of superior power. Jesus, God, is going to conquer them. Not you, not me, not your, your keen words that you type out on Facebook. Not your, your, your unique uh, way that you, 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 you tell the boss all about himself. No, no, no. God shall subdue them. He shall. They had the confidence because they let go. I want to point you back to that again and again and again. Because they were still and they let God. Because they let Him be exalted in their life. Because they let Him have the kingship. Because they let Him rule on His throne. They were, were able to truly see what God was going to do. And they had the confidence that God was going to subdue them. That God's going to conquer them. Here you go. Another reference. We're going to take the time to read this real quick. Because we have about five or ten minutes before I close. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justify, justify it. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again for us, uh, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So, so the same person who has the power and the authority to bring the condemnation is the same guy that's sitting on the, on the intercessor seat and saying, yeah, but <laughs> here's the real, yeah, but God. You know, we all want to say, yeah, but did you know what he did? And Jesus is going to say, yeah, but did you see what I've done? 
Are you with me? That's Jesus. Okay. We, he's going to subdue this. And keep reading, he says in verse number, uh, who shall, verse number 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation? Uh, distress? Persecution? Famine? Nakedness? Peril? Sword? You, you just name it. What's going to separate us? As it is written in verse number 36, For thy sake we are all killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. In all these things, what, these, what things? The sword, the condemnation, the, 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 the punishment, the shame, all of that. In all these things we are, what? More than conquerors. More than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors. In other words, the, the Bible is saying, the, the, the wording there is like, okay, I am promising you victory. How many of them are that feels pretty good? God promises you victory. That feels pretty good, doesn't it? He promises you victory. But He says, I am giving you more than a confidence that you're going to have victory. Not only is He promising you victory, He's guaranteeing you that He's promising you the victory through Him that loved us. Oh man, I wish... You could just follow this. I wish you could track this along and study this out. Because, listen, this is good. And it gets gooder when he says this. <laughs> For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor being present, things to come, height, death, any other creature shall be able to, what? Separate us from the love of God. So not only are we conquerors through the Him that loved us, there's nothing that's going to separate us from that. There is a promise that what shall come. Man, and you and I think we're just going to control it by grabbing the joystick of life. Let me have this one, God. Let me take this. I got this. <laughs> and we crash it. Nose dive right into the dirt. Are you with me? Jesus got this. We are more than conquerors. He shall subdue. He's going to render submissive. He will conquer because He loves you. And there is nothing Nothing in our world that's ever going to separate us from that. Finally, and we've already seen this. <clears throat> well, let, let me show you one more verse. Lamentations 3. Because I love this. <clears throat> Where did I read this? I'm, I'm, I think I'm missing something here. In verse number, oh, verse 4. I, I skipped over to verse 4 real quick. Verse, Psalm 47, verse 4. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. You know, in Psalm... And I would, I would refer you back to Psalm 16, where the Bible says, The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance. And he says, The lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. What Jesus is doing, what, what, the, what the psalmist is recognizing is, it's God who decides. He's given me the parameters. He's made sure that I have what I have. Okay? Earlier in, Re in Romans chapter 8, we already saw that, that uh, we, are, we are fellow heirs with Him, joint heirs with God. Uh, he's given us the same status as Jesus has. He granted us the inheritance. Are you following with me? Now to them, in this particular psalm, in this context, they were looking forward. They were looking ahead to the, 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 the Canaan land and they saw how God brought them and He made the promise and He brought, gave, he, he brought victory and, and they, they eventually got the Canaan land, the promised land. And God made sure He came through for them on that. But did you know God's promised you and I a home in heaven? He's promised you and I a relationship with Jesus. And all we have to do is just receive that. <laughs> and yet, <laughs> we got to take matters into our own hands. Here's the verses. First, this is what I wanted to point out. So not only is the portion of our inheritance, but Psalm Lamentations 3. This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. Compassion, love, we are not separated. Nothing can separate us from His love. Uh, His compassions fail not. Are you tracking? He's pretty good. This is what He's going to do. They are new every morning. So if you just so happen, which is impossible, to exhaust His mercies today, He's got new ones for you tomorrow. Brand new. Fresh. Ha! Did you listen, just like, just like that fresh cup of coffee. Amen right there. If you don't drink coffee, I'm sorry for you. But tea if you're a tea person. But hey, fresh. 
mercies every morning for you and for me. And then there's nothing that's going to separate us from that. The Lord, verse 24, is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Oh my goodness, folks. Have you, have you seen this? We can praise him because of what he is and what he's done and what he's going to do. For him who is uh, and was uh, and is to come, he is worthy 